It's Good Friday, and our journey to Easter through Lent and Holy Week brings us now to the cross. That moment of cruelty and despair. As hopes are shattered, justice has perished, and darkness has enveloped all. A time of shadows when expectant purpose seemed to crumble to dust. When joy and celebration turned to wailing and lament, when light and love seemed extinguished. All hope nailed to a wooden cross, all love pierced and futile, all peace gone, killed cruelly by those who were already the oppressors, satisfying the cries of a baying crowd who had, not so long before, cried, Hosanna, save us. Lord Jesus Christ, today of all days we are reminded of just how much we owe you, how great was the price you were willing to pay that we may have the gift of life. Forgive us for giving so little in return. We are reminded of how you stayed true as those around you failed you and stepped away from you. Forgive us for putting our own self-interest ahead of the interests of others. We are reminded of how much you love us, willing to follow a path even unto a cross. Forgive us for loving so sparingly. Heavenly Father, though we are flawed, imperfect and inadequate, hear us as we pray for others. We pray for the broken people of the world who experience something of the pain you too underwent. We pray for the broken in body, injured in accidents, maimed in war, struck by disease. Reach out in love and make them whole. We pray for the broken in mind, those tormented by fears, wrestling with depression, torn by stress. Reach out in love and make them whole. We pray for the broken in spirit, those whose dreams are destroyed, whose love has been betrayed, whose faith has been crushed. We pray for the broken in spirit, those whose dreams are destroyed, whose love has been betrayed, whose faith has been crushed. Reach out in love and make them whole. Lord Jesus Christ, in the cruelty of the cross you brought forgiveness, in the brokenness of your body you brought restoration, in the despair of death you brought a promise of new life. Reach out to us all, the broken and the imperfect, restoring, forgiving, loving. Amen. This is a story of the lengthening of shadows. As Jesus sets out on his final journey towards Jerusalem, the cross looms larger, overshadowing now the light of his miracles, the hope of his teachings. The disciples don't yet understand the nature of his calling, as their leader speaks of spilt blood, a body broken, of death and the cruel cross. From Luke 18, verse 31. Gathering the twelve disciples around him, Jesus told them, As you know, we are going to Jerusalem, and when we get there, all the predictions of the ancient prophets concerning the Son of Man will come true. He will be handed over to the Romans. They will whip him and kill him, but on the third day he will rise again. The disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them and they didn't know what he was talking about.
from John chapter 11, verse 47. The leading priests and the Pharisees called the high council together to discuss the situation. What are we going to do? They asked each other. This man certainly performs many miraculous signs. If we leave him alone, the whole nation will follow him. And then the Roman army will come and destroy both our temple and our nation. So from that time on, the Jewish leaders began to plot Jesus' death. From John 12, verse 35. Jesus came to Jerusalem. He said to his disciples, My light will shine out for you just a little while longer. Walk in it while you can, so you will not stumble when the darkness falls. Believe in the light while there is still time. From Matthew 26, verse 14. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priests and asked, How much will you be willing to pay me to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him thirty pieces of silver. From that time on, Judas began looking for the right time and place to betray Jesus. From Mark 14, verse 22. It was the time of the Passover, and Jesus and his disciples gathered to eat together. As they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and asked God's blessing on it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood poured out for many, sealing the covenant between God and his people. I solemnly declare that I will not drink wine again until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. From Mark 14 verse 32. Accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. And they came to an olive grove called Gethsemane. And Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James and John with him. And he began to be filled with horror and deep distress. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. He went on a little further and fell face down to the ground. He prayed that, if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine. From Matthew 26, verse 47. And even as he said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a mob that was armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent out by the leading priests and other leaders of the people. Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I go over and give him the kiss of greeting. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, teacher, he exclaimed and gave him the kiss. Jesus said, My friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Then Jesus said to the crowd, Am I some dangerous criminal that you have come armed with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But this is all happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. Then the people who had arrested Jesus led him to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest. From Matthew 26, verse 63. At daybreak, all the leaders of the people assembled, including the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law. Jesus was led before this high council. The high priest said to him, I demand, in the name of the living God, that you tell us whether you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus replied, 
Yes, it is as you say. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror, shouting, Blasphemy! Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they shouted. He must die. From Mark 15, verse 16. The soldiers took him into their headquarters and called out the entire battalion. They dressed him in a purple robe and made a crown of long, sharp thorns and put it on his head. Then they saluted, yelling, Hail, King of the Jews! And they beat him on the head with a stick, spat on him and dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. From Isaiah 53 verse 7. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. From prison and trial, they led him away to his death. But who among the people realised that he was dying for their sins, that he was suffering their punishment? Matthew 27, verse 35. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A signboard was fastened to the cross above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And the people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. So, you can destroy the temple and build it again in three days, can you? Well then, if you're the Son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests, the teachers of religious law and the other leaders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the King of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross and We will believe in him. From Psalm 22, verse 6. I am a worm and not a man. I am scorned and despised by all. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads, saying, Is this the one who relies on the Lord? 
then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. My life is poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax melting within me. My strength is dried up like sun-baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. From Lamentations chapter 1 verse 12. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look around and see. Is any suffering like my suffering that was inflicted on me, that the Lord brought on me in the day of his fierce anger? Tears flow down my cheeks. No one is here to comfort me. Any who might encourage me are far away. My groans are many and my heart is faint. From John 19 verse 30. Jesus said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus has been laid in the tomb. For now there is uncertainty, perhaps even despair. His words of promise may niggle in the mind of his followers. But for now they wait. We wait in that uncertain moment of gathering shadow. Darkness comes to our Good Friday. Life itself was in him and this life gives light to everyone. The light shines through the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Amen.